Gary, um, this curse continues, doesn't it? It's absolutely shocking. Uh, two one defeat here at Steel Park against Boldness and Michaels. But some, um, I don't know where do you want to start. The first half was quite poor. You put some changes on, start the second half, look more lively, scored a goal, lost the keeper. It, it, it all went on, but uh, possibly their winning goal came from what should have been pulled back for a handball. Yeah, I'm not. Listen, last week I was really disappointed with the officials. Um, but it's not his fault we lost today. Um, we weren't good enough today, as we have been, as we, have, as we hasn't been here a lot of the season. And I've just said to the lads there, you know, we've got to take responsibility. Myself, the staff, um, the players, we've got to take responsibility because not to have a home win at this stage of the season is that's, that's unusual and that's poor. That's, you know, that's, we can we can say what we want. We can blame refs. We can blame this. We can blame that. The fact of the matter is, we've we've not been good enough. And like I say, I've got to take full responsibility for that. I'm really really disappointed with the performance today, but that performance sums us up in a nutshell at Steel Park this year. You know, we've we've got ourselves. You know, the game game weren't great. That was that was two two average teams. If I'm being honest, that looked like two average teams in the middle of the table, which it is. Um, they set out to make it difficult for us, which they did, and we was too slow moving the ball. That was going sideways. You know, we didn't really have any zip, nothing to get the crowd on the edge of the seat, if you like. And then we then we got a goal that we got to keep. We we they had a sending off. We made some aggressive changes at half time. Um, forward thinking changes got a little bit better, but not a lot better. And obviously, then Dan's got sent off. That's the only time we've not had to keep on the bench all season. So. <laughs> Irony that. Irony. Yeah. And then um we get a we get a goal, something that enough and Toby's made it himself. He sort of won his own flick on and gone through and sort of not gone in with the keeper and the keeper's missed it and he's tapped it in, which is a good finish. And then we've done exactly what we what we do best here, don't we? We have we have possession of the ball for the first one. We've given the ball away for the for the goalkeeper. I mean, we've got good possession of the ball, we've lost it, they've gone through, Dan Wallace has come out. I don't know if it hit his arm, but like I say, when you when you're there, that's that's the decision. Mm. I thought he'd had a really good game, Dan. Um, so we're down to ten, and then we've got the ball again in good good possession of the ball. We give it away. They win a long throw. They throw it in the box and score. Again, we have possession of the ball, whether it's handball or not. Mm. We've got possession of the ball, and we we turn it over and concede. And I'm the one who's got to take responsibility. I put the players together. I put the team out. I do the training. I do the tactics. And to have 24 points from 18 or 19 ain't, ain't good enough. Mm. And that's that's the long and the short of it. You know, I've got big shows. I know that we've not achieved where we wanted to be so far this season. And, you know, I think this, I think, you know, we've got to have a, bit of a reality check as a football club because what's a big football club? Is it the biggest stadium with the biggest fan base off the pitch, which we are 100% the biggest football club in this league, if that's stadium, fans, passionate fans, etc. Because our fans have been superb all season considering the form here. But if it's on the pitch, as in finances etc we're not nowhere near the biggest mm. club in this league and that's not me having a pop at anyone or saying we should do this and do that because if people see fans through the gate you should have the biggest mm. biggest to spend but the fans through the gate only pays for probably 30 percent of the yeah. running of a football club and our owners keep having to put money in the cells and that cost them money and obviously the better we do the less it costs them because Obviously, the gates are better, etc., and that's hard for them. And anyone who put money in at the football club deserve, you know, a huge pat on the back. But since COVID, since we've come back from COVID, step four football has just changed because you used to be able to get a top player for two hundred and fifty quid, maybe three hundred. Top players that may cost you double mm. at this level, and our football club ain't got them finances where other football clubs have. There's a lot of them about. So that is really, really difficult. And because you're Corby Town, we all think Corby Town's the biggest club in the league. A lot I'll explain to you. Off the pitch it is, because we've got the best stadium, we've got the best, most passionate fans. 
But on the pitch, that is a little bit of a struggle here mm. at the minute. And I'm not blaming that because there's a lot of teams with a lot less than what we have mm. above us right now. So, listen, I'm, I'm holding my hands up and taking full responsibility. But this, this football club has got to build again. It's got to, it's got to build, somehow build to get to where it needs to get. This should be a step three football club with at minimum with mm. everything it's got. But we've got to find a way to build a team that's good enough to, to get in the playoffs and get in the top best ones of the league. And we've got to have some stability, some more investment, everything. We've, we've got, to, we've, as a football club, we have got to raise the bar another 25, 30% to be able to get to where your top teams are in this league financially. And until we do that, that's always going to be a struggle because you lose Hale Zone and Stamford. And then this year it's Harborough, Anstey and Spalding. And then who's it going to be next year? Do you know what I mean? There's always two or three teams who have got a, I don't know, so we say Sugar Daddy or ownership. Who's got, yeah. but in a lot of say, this isn't me saying to our owners, we should have more money. We should have, because they're already putting a lot of their yeah. own money oh, yeah. in. So we're just in a situation now where that's a reality check for everyone. Now, I said to my players, we need to get 13 or 15 points in the next five games to give ourselves a chance. We can't do that now. We're, we're effectively now playing dead rubbers unless we can get on some unbelievable run, which, you know, we are capable, but we're not, we're not doing enough as a football team at the minute. And I'm trying my best. I'm, we're, we're training. We're doing everything we can to try and make it work. And that's... You know, I didn't see that flat performance coming after last week. And that's what it was. There's no hiding up from it. Last week, I was really pleased with my players, yeah. although we lost against Loughborough. I thought we played really well and lost. Today, I think we didn't do enough to win the game. And that's, I'll always be honest with you and try and give the supporters a bit of insight to how I'm thinking. But I'm really, really disappointed how it's gone this year. I didn't expect us to be in the position we are. Like I say, that falls on me because I'm the manager. I pick the team. I recruit the players. I keep the players from last year, so that's 100% my team. So that's my responsibility. And the, the fact of the matter is, to date, we ain't been good enough. I ain't been good enough to date. Hopefully I get the opportunity to put it right. But, you know, we've just lost three or four on the bounce. That's, you know, I've been in football long enough to know, mm. you know, that's, that's not a great position to be in. Had a little bit of credit in the bank from last year because we, we went on an unbelievable run. But... And what I've done at my previous clubs, but you know, it's getting tough now because if every game that's harder to win, you know, we can say, Oh, make a joke about it, or oh, we're away next week, or oh, we'll probably get a win. But that ain't that ain't no good to, to be a to be a top side in around the playoffs. And there are teams around the playoffs like Lye, Hinkley, Loughborough, you know, we've probably got better resources than same as them. So like I say, that's that's not a that's not a, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just giving people a reality check to where this football club is because a lot of people think because you've got the biggest crowds and the biggest stadium that you've got the most money to put on the pitch and that certainly isn't the case at this football club. No, I think you're right, Gary. It sums it up and obviously we appreciate your honesty. So hopefully um, put your feet up for a couple of days and we'll yeah. see you at Cambridge, well, yeah. against Cambridge City on Wednesday night when we go yeah. to St Ives to play football there. Yeah, you will. No problem. Thank you very much. Take care.